Alrighty guys, my old Mini 14. We've used this a lot at the school. It's uh, popular among our beginners. We use this a lot for farm safety classes, but I'll tell you a secret. I like it, but I never use it for anything other than basic beginner farm safety, loading, unloading, and a little bit of blasting practice. The reason why is I hate this rear sight. This rear sight on the Ruger Mini 14 Ranch Rifle, it's constantly loose. As you can see, it's just doing, like there's no way we could possibly get this thing zero it and holding zero so one of the problems with this thing is also there's no good way to click adjust you know this rear sight you're supposed to like undo one set screw a half a turn and then do the other set screw in a half a turn and then try it and then undo a half turn half turn and tighten that one a half turn it's just a very non-scientific process so finally i got fed up with this thing and we are going to upgrade the sights on this guy for ruger uh sorry tech sights these are mini 200 I tried to make sense of their website. Um, so hopefully this is the right model for it, but let's go through, we're gonna change it out and then we'll zero it. The cool thing about these sites is that they're GI style. So uh, protected wing, aperture sight, and uh, once they're installed, they'll have a click adjustable with a tip of a bullet, click adjustable for seven eighths minute of angle per click. And the cool thing about that, if you have done the math, uh, that's right about a quarter milliradian per click. So in other words, uh, here at this school at Monarch Defense, we switched over to being a um, uh, metric, uh, kind of metric-centric school because it's just superior base 10 math. And by switching over to these, allows us to do quarter minute, uh, quarter milliradian. I'm sorry, quarter milliradian adjustments per click. What that means is, uh, at 100 meters, when we zero this thing, every click will move two and a half centimeters, or four clicks will move 10 centimeters at 100 meters. All right, let's go. 25.6. Last round. Any other one. All right, ice and yours on. Let's load. We're shooting a 45 grain 223 frangible today, uh, which is a really common ammunition we use for the school. It's not the most precise ammo, but again, most of what we're going to do with this rifle is bang on steel uh, at close range. So let's uh, let's load. Step one: insert magazine. Make sure it's locked in. Step two: we cycle the charging handle hard, like that, and we check that the safety is in the rear position. That would be on fire. This is on safe. So we're gonna borrow this little range bag. Let's fire a group, we're at 25 meters. <clears throat> People think iron sights can't shoot very well, so let's just see what iron sights can do. And uh, again, I don't clean this rifle very often. I usually clean it once a year on November or in th on Thanksgiving. That's about the only time I ever clean this thing. It's about as abused of a rifle as you can find. I saw a little peek earlier. Um, my sight isn't great, but I was pretty pleased. Let's go look at this group. What do you think? So for those who don't know, uh, that we're at 25 meters, this is a 2.9 centimeter square. So this is four minutes of angle square. In general, when we're shooting iron sights, we wanna aim for about a four minute of angle standard of precision. Notice that precision and accuracy are different. Precision refers to, uh, can you, you and your rifle and your scope and your ammunition do the same exact thing predictably the same way every single time. That's precision. It's, it's, it's a matter of you and the machine doing what it's supposed to do. Then there's accuracy. Accuracy is, are you hitting the target? We're very close. As you can see, I just put these sights on and we didn't do anything with them yet other than just fiddling with them. Um, so we just gotta make a sm small change and it's gonna be great. So uh, that's very encouraging. Two zero, again, we'll shoot a nice group, get a nice rested position. Um, we take our pen, put it right there in the center of the group. We're gonna get down eye level with it and we're gonna measure uh, from our plumb line to the center of the target. We'll drop down our plumb line and we're gonna measure two centimeters horizontally and straight down to the center. Then we'll just simply run our math and we can correct it. All right. Zeroing is really simple. 
shooting a rifle is really simple. But if you don't know how to do it, then you're not going to hit whatever you're trying to hit. So we're going to establish a 25 meter battle zero for this rifle. And remember, uh, AR-15s, you may zero at 25 meters for the Army's battle zero, which will give you uh, 25 meter, ooh, 25 meter, 300 meter, approximately, using an M4 carbine. Well, this Mini-14 is not an AR-15. So let me show you what's different about it. What's different is the sights and the barrel are really close together. The sights are right on top of the barrel. So in other words, your bullet is starting out not as low, right? So AR-15s start out about 2.6 inches, oh my God, 2.6 inches below the, the uh, line of sight. Mini-14 is only starting out maybe three quarters inch below line of sight, right? Anyways, so the point is, even though we're zeroing at the same distance, we're gonna get a shallower trajectory with a shorter far zero. I'm not sure what it is. We can run up the corrections in just a minute. But the point is, it'll be a very usable zero and it's nice and simple uh, for doing the math. All right, so let me show you how to do the math. It's really simple. We're gonna go in the process, step one, measuring centimeters. Now this is centimeters at 25 meters. We're gonna actually multiply this by four and bring this into at 100 meter equivalent. So we multiply everything by four. Let's do that together. So two centimeters at 25 meters, multiply by four, multiply by four, this gives us eight centimeters at 100 meters. Why do we do this? Why is that important? It's because when we memorize our reference information, look up here, we know that at 100 meters, one MOA is equal to 2.91 centimeters. And one MOA is also equal to uh, 0.29 mils. That's if you're doing MOA to mil conversions, depending on your scope. We also know that one mil at 100 meters is equal to 10 centimeters. Because this has a quarter mil click, we also know that 0.25 mils is equal to 2.5 centimeters. That's every click. Or, in other words, you can do this math in either minutes or milliradians, whichever numbers are more familiar to you. So usually when we're working at the so-called rifleman level, at the basic rifle level, we're going to be working in minutes of angle. It's more familiar to you guys. But because the math is so easy at quarter mil per click, we're going to actually switch over to milliradians. And again, those who are learning uh, how to use precision rifles, scopes, and long range, you're going to be very familiar with doing milliradian math. It's a better base 10 system. It's just an easier, faster mental math system. So we're going to go into that. Step one is centimeters at 25 meters. We convert to centimeters at 100 meters. Then we're going to, step two, we're going to convert it into MRADs in this case. So we're moving from linear measurements to angular measurements. So let's do that now. We have eight centimeters at 100 meters. We're going to convert this to milliradians. So this is going to be 10 centimeters per milliradian. 10 per MRAD. 10 centimeters per MRAD. Centimeters are going to cancel. So we're left with one over milliradian. 1 over milliradian on the bottom of this division. We'll just flip over, and it'll become MRAD over 1, and this all cancels out. So we have 8 tenths MRAD. All right, 8 tenths MRAD. Finally, step 3. Step 3, we're going to convert this into clicks. In other words, we know that we can move in quarter mil clicks. Every click is a quarter mil in this rear sight, on both windage and elevation. We know we need to go 0.8 mils, we can only go in quarter mil increments, so this equals 0.75 MRAD, 0.75 mils, and that's both up and 0.75, oopsies, I'm sorry, that's down, and, and 0.75 MRAD to the right. This is our solution. All right, so let's make our changes. First, we're gonna unload the rifle, of course, one in the chamber, there it goes. Lock our breech open. I inspect it. Cool. Weapon's dirty, but it's clear. So now it's time to make our changes. We're going to grab our favorite tool for making elevation corrections. Whoopsies, that's a blank. <laughs> oh, that's a nine millimeter. <laughs> Embarrassing. There we go. That's our favorite tool for making our corrections. We're going to go in the up direction. No, down direction. Let's see. 
let me see if I understand these arrows. There's a down arrow, I think that's down to the right. And an up arrow is moving it to the left. We need to come down, so I gotta push it to the right. I think that's what these arrows mean. There's little arrows right here. I'm not totally certain. Whatever, if we go the wrong way, we'll go the wrong way. It's gonna be three clicks. So there's one, there's two, there's three. Oh, I love that. That's really, really, really uh, clean. Okay, we need to move three clicks or 0.75 MRAD in the right direction. It's gonna be counterclockwise. There's one click. And uh, I got to muscle it. There's two clicks. And right there, there's three clicks. Perfect. Now, what do you know? Malfunction poo. All right, let's go check it. All right, I'd say we're zeroed. And that little guy, just don't think about that little guy. You don't need to worry about him. So I think we're pretty well zeroed. What do you think? I really like that you can make mathematical nerdy adjustments, but look how simple that process is. Shoot a five shot group, measure, correct, shoot a five shot group to confirm you're done. So let's do some blasting. Ready? <laughs> yeah, there's one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Guess this rifle doesn't like this ammo. Um, these frangible rounds are kind of blunt. Bingo. Getting kind of dark. Found was that this aperture is Oops. pretty small for nighttime shooting. And it's getting to the point where I can't see through the aperture anymore. You want to get this? Yeah, let's do that. Let's get that on film. The thing about these rifles is that they're just handy. They're not the best. They're not the most accurate. But they're light. They're fast. They're pretty small. They're comfortable. They have really classic ergonomics. They handle well. They're easy for beginners to use. They don't kick. They're not the best. They're not the most accessorizable Barbie doll thing. But, like, it's just a robust simple rifle and again for its job as a truck gun having difficulty here for its job as a truck gun or so-called ranch rifle they do the job they do what you need them to do they're just handy right you can have a nice simple leather strap on it that's called american carry right that's called african carry i should say african carry is left shoulder barrel is really hot so i got to be careful there we go american carry be over the right shoulder like that. Reach through your armpit, draw that arm out. There we go. Let's see if we can get a one last shot. Oh, that was a miss. Well, thanks guys for joining us. I'm what you call a professional. What, how does it go? Uh, remember, don't try this at home. I'm what, I'm what you call a professional. I need to recheck my lines.